the bottom line, we're seeing none to very little pressure increase in the history of the well, and certainly well below most of the delta pressures that you were calculating in the models. So let, let me ask that, just so I understand what the model means. So, so you're saying if we're, we're you're at the bottom of your injection well, mm -hmm. you've seen somewhere between zero and 100 pounds of pressure change. Pressure change from when from the well was drilled to till today. Till today. <laughs> it, it, what is that change? If, you, if, it's, if it's zero pressure, if on the low end, zero, on the high end, 100, what does that change about your model? Like Heather made a good point earlier that you know, we talk about diff, like there's different results in the model and different results in the conclusions in the, in, the, in the paper. Those are different things, right? Mm -hmm. Just in the model, what would the difference, what would that change if you say, well, there's no pressure change? Is, it, is that a big deal in them? Not really. I mean, I guess I'm not surprised by it. We knew that okay. uh, the same thing we saw, we saw at XTO. So what happened was they had fall-off tests as well, and they show that you have about, I want to say it was about 70 PSI excess fluid pressure in the well when they'd had to fall off test during the earthquake period. So it tells us that permeability is high, is what it tells us, which it's a good site to, to put an injector well. Um, so that's what it told us when we saw it before. Okay. <clears throat> but I, get, I guess what it tells me, and maybe I'm misinterpreting the paper, so please correct me. With, when I look at your models, uh, excess pressure at well number two is one of the things that you, you put in your table mm -hmm. and output. In, a, in 11 out of the 15 cases that that were run, that excess pressure at well number two was 236 psi or higher. Yeah. I mean, one of them was 400 and something. Well, I'm I'm seeing between zero and 100, so I'm saying 11 out of your 15 runs are very incorrect. Well, and I would I look, argue that I look at the other four, and in your calculated yeah. delta p at the Ellenberger at the anathetic fault. So again, this isn't 20,000 feet down where the earthquake, it's between one and two PSI. So I guess what I'm wondering is, I make sure I understand you correctly. You're, measure, you're telling me your bottom hole pressure when you're not pumping any fluid down there is close to zero. The, no. It's close to, no, it's close to zero change. That's what I'm saying, yeah. from, zero change. Yeah. Which, exactly. which is what you're modeling too, right? You're modeling change in pressure, right? And what you're ultimately getting is change in pressure at the anathetic fault, I think, at the Ellenberg. I'm not even, correct? okay, so I'm not even talking about the anathetic fault. What I'm saying is at the bottom of your hole, you're telling me that once you shut in yeah. and you measure pressure, yeah. it drops down to about yeah. zero. Change. Yeah. Zero change. That's Between not, zero and 100. So that's not yeah. a surprise to me at all. You're going to have high pressures when you start pumping fluids into the system. This is just conservation of mass, Darcy's law. So what he's arguing is apples and oranges. No offense. Because you're injecting well, no, fluid wait, down wait, a hole wait, in a straw. Hey, wait, 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 I'm going to step in here and say this is this is enough. We're not going to have this discussion Thank you. at this level today. We've got a, a, okay. a, a process and a procedure.